Are there any members' statements? The Honourable Kyle McGinn. released last week and launched in my electorate during recent NAIDOC celebrations. Madam President, I hold in my hands here tonight an extremely valuable cultural artefact. For the benefit of Hansard, I'm holding a storybook called William Widgety, The Life Cycle of the Widgety Grub. Yes, this is a storybook for kids. This book is called William Widgety and was published last week. I would like to acknowledge the author for Tessa Colbung, who is here in the gallery, along with her family, her two daughters, Keisha Coleman, Shanae Sambo, and her son, Joseph Coleman. For Tessa is a very hardworking, multi-talented woman who has designed and produced fashion, exhibited that work from Sydney to New York, and runs a successful business that mentors young Aboriginal models and consistently provides meaningful employment and work opportunities for other Aboriginal artists. I'm very proud to have worked with Vitessa several times on different projects. I would like to congratulate Vitessa on writing this book and acknowledge the work of Cassandra Woods, who translated the book into Najintara language, as well as Talia Lynch, who painted all the illustrations. Vitessa's business, Desert Gem, is an important organisation and is one that focuses on areas of preservation of language and teaching of cultural heritage. William Widgety will be one of the very few children books available in traditional Goldfields Najinjara language. This book is a very important cultural artefact as it will not only provide opportunities for young Aboriginal kids to learn language and culture, but also for non-Aboriginal families to gain a greater understanding and respect for Najinjara culture. Now that Tessa and her siblings don't get to learn too much of their family language themselves when they were growing up, because their grandmother, who was fluent, was forbidden from speaking the language. The preservation of language in any culture is vital, and especially for Aboriginal languages, as we are rapidly losing fluent speakers. In the goldfields alone, we have at least 14 major language groups, but the chances of fully preserving every language get slimmer every day as we lose more elders. Our local Goldfields Aboriginal Language Centre works very hard on the preservation of local language and I commend them for their work. Especially senior linguist Sue Hanson. Sue provided me with some of the statistics that I'll refer reference later on in this speech. Discovering this rich area of culture is important work and once work on each language starts, there are often few other dialects that pop up. An estimated 40% of Aboriginal people in the Goldfields speak Aboriginal language is their first language, with many of the remaining 7,200 people speaking language as a second language or as a partial speaker. Cultural heritage and knowledge is passed on through each generation by language. Language is integral in affirming and maintaining well-being, self-esteem and strong sense of identity. Inherent in language is a complex understanding of a person's culture and their connection with their land. It is important to acknowledge absolutely vitally now during modern Kalgoorlie's 125th anniversary of gold found in the goldfields that the goldfields was heavily impacted during European settlement, particularly during the 1890-1910. This population boom of about 20,000 people following the first gold rushes decimated a number of Aboriginal populations through disease, starvation, competition for water and food, massacres and, of course, stolen generation of children. At the William Widgety book launch in Kalgoorlie during NAIDOC week, a local elder, Mary Champion, shared an amazing story from her family. It was very powerful, and I'd like to share an excerpt from that with you now. I call my grandmother the stowaway. She got put on that ship from Australia to England. She was taken away from a mission, the mission just outside of Quadring, down the southwest. The police came in on horseback, picked up my grandmother, about eight or nine years of age. They took her away to Perth and they put her on a ship and took her to England. They gave her to a family over there where she learnt all the English ways. She grew up not knowing she was Aboriginal. She grew up not knowing any of her family. As she grew older, she probably heard someone speaking about she is an Aboriginal from Australia. In her heart, there was a desire to get home to get back to Australia. 
She was only 14 or 15 and she went and checked out the big ships down at the port and she said, I'm going back to Australia. I'm going back to meet my people, my Aboriginal people. I'm going to meet my own mother. That was in her heart. And if you've got that in your heart, you've got the desire. You can do anything. So she got on a ship as a stowaway and she hid for three days. She didn't have no money. She was 14 to 15 years old. How dangerous would that have been? The ship was full of men, drunken sailors. She hid and she used to eat food from the bins and drink water from the deck. But she had that in her heart that she was going home. The ship took her to Perth where she got off. When she got to Perth, she met some Aboriginal people and they said, where you, where you come from? I think you come from Badgeling. That's outside of Quadring. So you, she went out there at this very young age. And when she got there, she learned that her mother had died just a year before she got there. But she, and they took her to the grave site where her mother was buried. They said that her mother used to cry every night and call her name. But she went to the grave site and when she got there, there was a photo of her mother and she was holding a little baby. It was her. A kid's book might not seem like very much on its own, but consider this kid's book in particular. The publication of this book is an act of culture insur cultural insurance. This book is the result of many Aboriginal people working together to save their cultures. This book is a celebration of language survival. This book is the result of 60,000 years of culture and includes an English translation as an act of sharing culture. What a special gift to be given. This book looks to the future, aimed at the, ch at the children. Our next generation to teach them what was almost lost. This means something to little Najinjara kids. This year's NAIDOC theme was Because of Her We Can. And today I want to acknowledge the work of Atessa Colburn because her book, We Can Share and Celebrate This Beautiful Culture. So thank you very much. Before I give the call to other members, I would hope that we might find a copy of that book in the Parliamentary Library at some point soon. Yes.